In the last part, we have seen that a Griffith theory can be only applicable for brittle materials. But what about when materials deform plastically? So in this part, we'll be considering a one term which when we add to a Griffith theory, we can use that relation for materials which deform plastically. So let's consider this material and let's consider there is a surface notch and you can know that there will be a stress concentration ahead of this crack tip. And because of the stress concentration, when the stress ahead of this crack tip increases more than the yield strength of a material, there will be a plastic deformation and there will be a zone where material will deform plastically and that is called as plastic deformation zone where you can write this relation sigma and we add one more term that is gamma p over here so in the case of brittle material we use this relation but this term which was not there we just had gamma s which is nothing but a surface energy but when materials deform plastically we add an extra term that is gamma p which is nothing but a plastic work and we can use this relation to understand fracture mechanics of materials which deform plastically. Now let me introduce to another term. So this term 2 gamma s plus gamma p is equal to gc. This is another term which we get introduced. This is called as a critical strain energy release rate which is nothing but 2 gamma s plus gamma p and its unit is joules per meter square and we can when we write these joules as newton meter upon meter square we can get this unit to be as newton per meter that is nothing but a force required to move this crack or to extend this crack and thus this term gc is also called as crack extension force so you'll find these two terms in the literature that is strain energy release rate or crack extension force for this term that is gc which is nothing but twice of gamma s plus gamma b and this g can we can find it out as by taking a derivative of u naught that is a strain energy with respect to ta that is change in the crack length or extension of this crack now let's consider this material or object where which has a surface notch and when this crack extends you can see that there will be a change in the strain energy and that strain energy change with respect to this crack extension is called as g which is nothing but critical strain energy release rate or crack extension force and when you consider these materials to be unit thickness what we can find that this has to be energy release per unit increase in crack length so this is nothing but an energy release per unit increase in crack length and we can write this relation that sigma is equal to egc upon pi a to the power 1 by 2 and now when you want to understand a plastic materials in terms of fracture mechanics what we need is this gamma s and gamma p so we need this gamma s and gamma p or in other words we have to find out what is g and we'll be doing that in our subsequent slides so we know that g is equal to d naught upon da now let's consider these two materials which has having surface notch with dimensions a1 and a2 and you can see that a1 is higher than a2 and now when you want to understand the crack extension or crack displacement and we apply this force over here let's plot this displacement and the force needed for this displacement as f versus delta and for crack a1 you get this force versus displacement in this fashion and for a crack a2 which is a larger crack as compared to a1 you will require a less amount of force to cause the displacement or a crack extension because you can see that when the crack is more the stress required will be lower and thus the force required will be lower like we have can see from our previous relations and thus for the same displacement or crack extension when the crack length is smaller you require a higher force let's consider the slope of this f versus delta to be m1 when you have crack length a1 and m2 when you have crack length a2 and from this diagram you can write that when a2 is greater than a1 m2 is less than m1 this slope is smaller when the crack length is higher or larger now we can write this relation in this way where f is equal to m into delta and i call this m as to be stiffness of material so we can see that this is a force this is a displacement and this m which is a slope we can consider it as a stiffness or something kind of a spring constant. Now let's consider this scenario where you have a surface crack of length A1 and what we do here is like we fix this material over here so that you have a displacement as you want. So 
let's fix this displacement to be delta over here so let's fix it and let's find out what is a force and displacement so for let's say for this displacement delta for this crack length a1 which has a stiffness m1 and let's consider another crack over here which is a2 and what is the force needed for this a2 so definitely if a2 is greater than a1 and we have fixed this displacement the force required for a2 will be smaller as compared to force required for a1 and let's consider its slope to be m2 and this is what i meant you have a same displacement for a same displacement of for a different crack length the crack length is smaller you require a higher force and the crack length is larger you require a less force and you can write that strain energy or elastic strain energy release as to be u naught is equal to 1 by 2 f into delta which is nothing but the area under this curve so this is nothing but the area under the curve and we can replace this delta using the stiffness parameter and the force required and we can write delta is equal to f upon m and if you replace it here you get this relation that u naught is equal to f square upon 2m and now our job is to find out what is the g this is our aim to find out what is the g of material and let's do that so we have this relation g is equal to d u naught upon da and u naught is equal to f square upon 2m now we have seen this scenario too where we fix the displacement and we try to find out what is the force so we have delta 1 is equal to delta 2 which we can write it as f1 upon m1 is equal to f2 upon m2 now you can see that f upon m this ratio remains constant for different crack lengths so you have f1 upon m1 f2 upon m2 similarly if there is a crack length a3 we can write it as f3 upon m3 in principle this f upon m this ratio remains constant and when you differentiate this f upon m with respect to a crack extension that is a and we can get this relation so we can write this when you differentiate to a partial differentiation we get 1 upon m del f upon del a plus f del of 1 upon m upon del a is equal to 0 and we can find out what is a force that is required for changing the crack length and we can find out this del f upon del a to be minus of f m del of 1 upon m upon del a now we need to find out a strain energy release right that is our aim that is this parameter g which is also called as a crack extension force and we can find out that g is equal to d u naught upon d a and you put this u naught to be f square upon 2m and when you do partial differentiation we will get this relation and in this relation when you get this relation what you have to do is that you just replace this del f upon del a from this part and when you do that we get g is equal to minus 1 upon 2 f square del of 1 upon m upon del a and when you want to find out a critical strain energy release rate at what value the material will break or a critical strain energy release rate so you will have this f to be replaced by fc that is a critical force and or a to be replaced by ac that is a critical crack length and we can replace this relation for a critical strain energy release rate in this manner that is equal to gc is equal to minus 1 upon 2 fc square del of 1 upon m upon del a now how to find out this gc what you have to do is that you plot this 1 upon m where m is nothing but a stiffness or the slope of f versus delta and when you plot this 1 upon m versus a you will get something a curve like this and at a critical value somewhere here let's say at a critical crack length a you find out the slope which is nothing but del of 1 upon m upon del a at a is equal to ac and this when you get this slope you can find out what can be the critical strain energy release rate now this graph what it means is that when i have a crack length somewhere here and if i have an extension of crack let's say till ac the crack remains stable it doesn't propagate catastrophically it remains stable so as soon as you reach ac or beyond ac a little more beyond ac the crack remains unstable and it propagates drastically so this is nothing but a stable region that is below ac will have this crack to be or behaves to be in a stable manner above this ac the crack will propagate drastically or catastrophically or crack remains unstable let me introduce to one more term in fracture mechanics 
which is a fracture toughness. To introduce this term, let's consider case study of the D Havilland comet crash. So this was an, an aeroplane for passengers and this is a company which used to run this. So there were two cases of crash where in 1954 January 10th, the first flight which is from Rome to London, it got disintegrated in the mid-air and almost 56 passengers died. Shortly when this de Havilland started operating, again there was a crash on April 8, 1954 from Rome to Cairo and this again this it crashed in the Mediterranean Sea within 30 minutes of takeoff. Almost all precautions were taken and almost all design parameters were taken into consideration. Still these two flights crashed and this case study has led to design changes and we will be looking at it shortly. This de Havilland Comet airplane was made of aluminium alloy fuselage and there are, these are fuselage is nothing but a cylinder, cylinder and let's consider some of the values that is GC that is a critical strain energy release rate or a critical crack extension force to be 53 newton per millimeter and let's consider its Young's modulus to be 76,000 newton per millimeter square and the hoop stress when we consider a cylinder or fuselage the hoop stress we can find it out to be 138 newton per millimeter square so this stress was there and the material is operating beyond this hoop stress the material will fail that is what it means and let's consider the design over here so this, this is a, a hoop stress which is like considered to be 125 mpa or maximum stress which is allowed is 138 mpa that is newton per millimeter square and this aeroplane has a design of windows which has a square shape and you can see that there was some riveting which was done around these windows and if you consider a stress concentration over here like some part over here which is nothing but a sharp corner you can see that the stress variation was in this way you have these values of from 68 to 197 mp and because of this riveting when this crack forms over here this rivet joint and this joint with a window so let me explain it to you so we have this relation sigma is equal to e g c upon pi a and we can find out what is a critical crack length so we have these numbers with us and we can find out this ac to be 67 millimeter and which is nothing but a large crack length. It was considered to be much safer. However, when this cracks joined, it joined with a window and window has a size of something around more than this critical crack. Length. So crack ending at windows and these were sharp edges and this window now when it joined with this crack, they act as an extended crack and thus you have this window length plus crack length which gets added up and this now complete acts as a one crack which is more than this critical crack length. So you can see that the fracture starts somewhere here and it originates from this place because now this is considered as a complete crack and now this this will act as a crack tip these sharp edges of these windows and then crack will propagate somewhere here and again it join with another window and thus there was a fracture occurring drastically and that is how these two aeroplanes crashed mid-air just after taking off and this uh, case study lead to change in the design criteria so because of the stress concentration at these windows you can see that there is a stress concentration on these windows, the square windows were replaced by oval shape. Now you will never find a square windows in aeroplane. This will be always oval shape. This is a design criteria which is being thought about by considering these two case studies. Now I have mentioned when we started our lecture on, on fracture, I have mentioned about this Aloha aircraft disaster and you can read about this and the similar situation you will find that there is crack or sharp crack present and because of the poor design the sharp cracks will get unnoticed and they propagate drastically. Now let's consider this relation which we have written sigma is equal to EGC upon pi a to the power 1 by 2 and now I can do some juggling over here I can put this root pi a at this side and I can write this as sigma root pi a is equal to under root of EGC. Now you can see that E which is nothing but Young's modulus which is also constant and GC is nothing but 2 gamma S plus gamma P and this is also materials property. So the, you have this E and G as GC as materials property and we can replace this square root of EGC to be equal to KC 
and this is nothing but a fracture toughness so we call this a square root of this product as kc that is a fracture toughness or a critical stress intensity factor so one more term which i'm introducing to you is a fracture toughness of material which is nothing but square root of egc now i can write this as a critical stress intensity factor or critical fracture toughness when this sigma reaches to sigma c or a reaches to ac let me mark it over here so we can consider this as when it goes to sigma c or a reaches to ac we can consider this as to be kc or in general we can write this as k is equal to sigma under root of pi a that is a stress intensity factor so its units are mpa meter to the power 1 by 2 is very straightforward sigma has a unit of mpa and a is nothing but uh, it is on square root so you will have m to the power 1 by 2 this is the typical units which we see or when you write in terms of a force you can write as mega newton m to the power minus 3 by 2 so be aware of this units in literature you will find that both units are used and when i talk about in general way the fracture will occur when k is equal to k as simple so when sigma tends to sigma c this k will tends to kc let me write that down so it is k becomes kc only when you have sigma tending to sigma c or a tending to ac so fracture will occur when k becomes equal to kc again when we consider the geometry of this crack you can write this k that is stress intensity factor is equal to some constant alpha sigma under root of pi where alpha is the geometric constant it depends on the specimen and crack geometry so when you consider a different crack geometries you will have this variation in the alpha value for example let's consider when a is through thickness crack you know that this is a through thickness crack so this is continuing throughout this thickness let me mark over here so you have this through thickness crack which extends for this thickness let me mark as w so this is a through thickness crack and for that this geometric constant can be given as w upon pi a tan of pi a upon w so you can get this kind of constants in a standard textbook you don't have to remember this so for a which is much much less than w then alpha is equal to 1 so when thickness is much much less you can consider this alpha to be 1 now let's understand this fracture toughness using a salt problem let's consider this crack as to be partial through thickness crack it's not complete so it's inside this material so for that alpha is given as secant of pi a upon 2t where a is depth of penetration and t is equal to wall thickness and for this material we have been given as kc is equal to 24 mega newton meter to the power minus 3 by 2 and a to be 5 mm and t to be 12 mm now we can find out what is alpha or there is another term which is given that is applied stress as 172 mpa now let's find out alpha first so here you can get alpha by plugging these values that you put this a to be 5 mm and t to be 12 mm and you get alpha to be 1.26 now you can use this alpha in this relation and you can find out what can be sigma f that is a fracture stress required for propagating this crack so it comes out to be 171 mpa now the applied stress for was given as 172 mpa and thus this stress which is required to propagate the crack is smaller than the applied stress and thus the crack will propagate and there will be a fracture that is a fracture will take place so based on the fracture toughness value you can find out what can be a fracture stress or a critical crack which requires to have the fracture and with this i will stop